pain. It's not letting me do an additional thing. I don't know if that's because I don't have any notes set up for the additional stuff, or... See, I should always be able to do station, for example. And I should be able to always do at least two, since I'm only using four otherwise. But there's still only the four dwarf train order listed. It's not actually listing the extra order. So here I am on, on Smashers. I hit orders to add another order. I set them for uh, one soldier. I convert it to a patrol route. I hit confirm. I should have you know, something additional there, and I'm not seeing any additional orders. If I tab to the order list, I'm not seeing the additional orders there. So I'm going to have to go back and look at my notes. It's been a while since I've done this. Typically, like I said, if I'm dealing with squads, I'm not usually having them auto-rotate. I'm either putting them on duty and they're doing something very specific, or I'm putting them on training and they're doing something very specific, and I'm not generally switching them around. Um, folks who want to set up complicated, deep military stuff are advised to go out and hunt for some advanced training that I haven't provided for you here. But the basics of scheduling work pretty much like you'd expect. You set up an alert, you set up a task uh, for a given month, you tell them how many dwarves you want it to do it, and when that month rolls around, that many dwarves will do it. Now you can control manually which dwarves are doing that particular task by selecting specific dwarves and assigning them to be the ones that do that task. So if you want to manually rotate your dwarves through order or through uh, patrol duty, for example, you can have the patrol set for all the all the months, but then rotate which dwarves are actually doing the job. Let's say we need to get some more people doing rock pots. We're seriously falling behind on the whole rock pots building thing, aren't we? I'm going to go ahead and assign a second kitchen worker so we can start working on this backlog of uh, meat and other goods sitting in our main stockpile, our main food stockpile here. This is what I mean when I say drowning in food. Um, we've got 928 plants ready to be brewed or processed, and we've got something like 700 or 500 prepared meals already. I've only got 63 dwarves, so right now I could feed my dwarves for something like 10 years.
Our dining room is still only grand, however, so we're going to have to uh, get some more improvements in place. There we go. There's your multiple orders. God, it's been a long time. Okay, here's the here's the trick. Here's how it works. Let me go ahead and cancel this order so we can start from scratch. I have no order on this screen. So first I give them an order. I hit O. I hit O until I have train. I say, oh, well, I want to have five dwarves train. So I'll set five dwarves as my train, and I hit confirm. Now I have five dwarves training. That's the first order. Our second order, we're going to have them station at that note that I just created. I'll cover notes in a minute so you understand how to do this later. But we'll have them station at that note at the top, which basically means when you're not training, I want the other five dwarves to be in armor with their weapons standing at the top of the stairs in the rain if necessary. So... We then go ahead and go into the order list tab. So now you see that's green right there and it's listing our orders. So notice when we tab, it actually turns it green so we can see which month we're on. And then it moves the actual, where actually our cursor is actually down here on this train order now. Then we can give another order or we can edit this existing order. So we'll hit O to give another order. We'll switch through because I don't have anything set up. Uh, normally when you've got this set, you're... Uh, you're going to have your uh, your station is actually going to be turned off. Well, let me turn it back off now. Apparently, probably because I only have the one station, and so it's assuming you want to station at least one place. So I'll go ahead and leave that as is for now, and we'll go ahead and set it to the other five dwarves. We'll station at the surface stairs. I hit shift enter. And now you'll notice that the order list now shows mixed as the uh, active training alert here. And there are two orders listed down here at the bottom. Five minimum training, five minimum station. At that point, what I'll end up with is I'll have five dwarves training in the barracks and at, down in the basement. And five dwarves standing at the top of the stairs in the rain, uh, making sure no goblins get in. Now, I don't really want to do that. I really do want to have the training the way I have, so bear with me here. I'm going to put it back the way I had it with copy and paste. 
Um, once you set up a single order or group of orders, I think you may be able to do it with a group. Let's test that. Let's say I add another order here. We'll add a second station order. We'll do the five minimum here. Eureka, we've got the mixed. Let's say I copy and I go to paste. They both become mixed. It copies all the orders from that month. So now we'll copy train over the top of those because I want to have the training order as my only order and I want them off duty if they're not training. But to that point, you can get them doing the various different things. You can tab into the order list and add additional orders until you've used up all ten of your dwarves in that squad. Now let's go back upstairs because I, I, I did something to get this to work and I didn't really cover what I was doing here. I created a note. If you hit shift N by default, you can do what's called a note. Notes are places or notes to you the player or sites within your map that you want to deal with. So for example, I created a note called surface stairs right here on top of the staircases. You can see it blinking there. That creates a point in space, and I can tell my dwarves to station at that point. I can use it as part of a patrol route, so I could create another uh, another note here and call it, you know, po point two, for example. Or I could name the route and then, you know, have point one, point two, and point three on the same route, and I could set up a patrol route between them. So now I have three points. I can actually set up a patrol route with two, but we could set up a patrol route with three if we wanted. Um, we'll go back into our military screen. We'll go back into the uh, schedule screen. We'll go tab to get into the order list. We'll give a new order. We will tell them that we want to do a patrol route with, say, two dwarves. We haven't actually created a route. Excuse me, I didn't do that yet. we got to actually create a route first. In the notes menu, if you hit R, you can create a route. We'll create a route. We'll call it Route 1. We'll name it. We'll call it Temporary Route. Then you have to edit the waypoints, which means you're going to add... Um, you're going to add these points to that route. And there, now I've created a patrol route. The dwarves will go to temp point three, they'll go to the surface stairs, they'll go to temp point two, and then they'll rotate back to the first point. Effectively, they'll just rotate in a big line here, back and forth, but the, the principle's the same. If you wanted to set up a particular patrol route, this is how you do it. Now, once that's done and I have a route created and all the points assigned, I should be able to go in here, open up the schedule, uh, go tab into the orders list, hit O to give an order, change over to where I want a patrol route and say so so patrol route is automatically highlighted because I only have the one patrol route set two dwarves to be on that patrol route hit shift enter and get a mixed order where four people are training and two people are patrolling the temp route if I hit escape and I back out of oh hang on I'm not in the right month so let's make it in all the months here hang on a second I gotta do that too Two of my dwarves who were otherwise idle, and probably some of my dwarves, they'll switch in and out of their particular jobs. Uh, they'll eventually sort it out so that six of them are on duty, two of them will be on patrol, and four of them will be training in the barracks. And what we should see here momentarily is there's a dwarf that comes along and he's moving back and forth between the points. He's going to go all the way down here to the bottom point, and then he's going to go back up top to the stairs, and then he's going to go up there. And he'll repeat that for the entire month unless he gets uh, hungry, I think, is the only case where he'll deviate from his route. Um, our new trade agreement is in, and musical instruments are on the list. Uh, those are one of those things I like to look out for because they're very easy to produce. They can be made out of uh, just about anything. So let's go down to our, our stone grinding area here and we'll go ahead and set up a rock instrument tab as well so that we're also producing rock instruments
Urus McCheesy, did that cover your, do you understand how to set up uh, schedules for your dwarves now? I'm sorry, I was uh, a little confused on how to get it done. It's been a long time since I actually used separate orders. I don't normally have a squad doing multiple things. That cleared up for you guys? Okay, excellent. It's been a long time. I normally don't use patrol routes. I'll set uh, I'll set dwarves up to uh, defend particular burrows, but I don't normally use routes. Um, it's been a long time since I've felt any need to do so. Uh, you can set up routes for I, I believe it's routes that somebody has used to have their archers in their bunker automatically resupply themselves with ammo by patrolling, uh, patrolling out to a parapet shooting at targets until they run out of arrows and then when they fin when they go back and they patrol indoors they're out of ammo so that they pick up ammo near one of the points and they patrol back out to the parapet again to shoot some more and so effectively you can get them rotating in and out of combat as long as they're locked into their uh, their little pillbox basically um, typically if I'm uh, bothering to do anything other than training for my dwarves I'm probably just setting up a, an easy burrow and telling them to defend it. Uh, at this point, I'm going to have a couple of dwarves who spend a lot of time patrolling a route that I don't particularly care about, so I'm going to go back into the schedule, and I'm going to whack that, that order there to make sure that we remove that. Um, at that point, I've removed, I've removed it, so it's just training. I will copy training, and I will paste it over the top of this. Um, you can station them at a point... You can set a route up with three points. I, I think it's you require three. I, maybe we'll do it two. Um, you can set up a burrow and tell them to defend that area, and they will basically move to the burrow and protect it from anything that comes near it, uh, which is basically the equivalent of the station order, only you can tell them to protect an area instead of moving to a point. Um, in addition to that, there's, let's see, the other orders are, what am I missing here? Train, and that's the only other order you care about. Um, typically, if I'm going to do something fancy, you can assign dwarves. I could, for example, in the month of Obsidian, say I want to add a, add a defend burrow job where I always want Cog to be the one defending that burrow. And then the next month, I only want it to be Olin defending that burrow. The next month, I only want it to be Adil defending that burrow. Or patrol route or station or what have you you get the idea the gist is is that yeah you can control your 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 schedule right down to which dwarf is doing which job in which month and depending on how much micromanagement you want to do you can mitigate a lot of the uh the perils so to speak of your military with regards to like happiness for example you can make sure that a given dwarf is doing a particular job in a particular month or you can leave it fairly uh, democratic and have them decide.
Now in one of the oddities of Dwarf Fortress, I'll quickly demonstrate the... Uh, let me make sure my dwarves have armor, otherwise I'm going to get myself into a world of hurt here. Um, it looks like we're still getting a couple of items of armor. Helmets are very important for purposes of what we're getting ready to do. Gauntlets, high, uh, gauntlets and high boots as well seem to be missing for most of our dwarves. So we've got to give it a little bit longer while we finish making while we finish making up these last few items. Oh, I know what we forgot to do after all this time. We still haven't built our well. Our dwarves are drinking out of a hole in the ground. And we just changed months. Or someone changed jobs. I don't know which. I didn't catch it. Effectively, as the months rotate, the way I have my schedule set up, dwarves will rotate on their own in and out of active duty, so to speak. In and out of training duty. Even when they're not officially on duty, they can come and train on their own. If they have no other tasks, a lot of times you'll get them to do that. Okay, what I'm building here, because I'm sure this looks a little weird with all these stripes, this is going to become an archery training range for our crossbow dwarves. Uh, we don't have any in a squad yet, but remember I've got all those hunters who are basically skilling up and they're going to run out of ammo here before much longer. And before I actually give them more ammo, I want to get them out of hunting and into doing things that I want them to do, like shooting arrows at targets as a, instead. Now, when you build an archery range, basically you just, you're creating another type of room, like a dormitory or a barracks, and you size that room up appropriately, and then your archers will, and you mark it for training, and you have to build at least one for your archers to do any training at all. Then what you do is you make sure your archers have no training uh, schedule. Uh, you just leave them idle. They'll come and train on their own. Trust me, they'll train more than you want them to. They'll use up every bolt in your fortress if you let them. The reason I'm doing these long stretches of lane surrounded by long stretches of channel is because arrows that miss the targets and hit effectively empty space will fall down into the channels and not break, allowing them to be recollected and reused. And this will cut down on our, uh, on our uh, arrow use, basically, for purposes of training. It won't eliminate it, but... The way we're going to set it up, we'll use fewer arrows because some of them will effectively fall in the hole and survive. Um, arrows that hit the targets are still going to be broken and lost. 
Arrows that miss the target and land in the lane will probably be broken and lost, but not necessarily. Uh, Archer Dwarves are a little different from regular Dwarves. It can be a little weird to get them to train. If you set them to train in a barracks, they're not going to train archery in a barracks. They're going to train Hammer Dwarf, which is the skill they use when they bludgeon somebody with a crossbow as opposed to firing it at them. Uh, it's not a bad idea to have your archers trained as Hammer Dwarves because they can use their crossbows to parry attacks, for example. But it's important to remember that, you know, their primary focus is in shooting bolts at things not beating them over the head. Before you ask, yes, these channels are directly over my lower level stockpile, that won't hurt anything. You won't accidentally kill your dwarves on the lower level by mistake. Um, I could have done it down here, except that digging down would have punched the hole into the caverns that I don't want. I could have gone up another level and had just the channels by themselves, but I'm actually going to remove the ramps anyway, and at that point they might as well have a way into the channel from down here. I'm using Cinnabar, despite the fact that it's not actually blocks in this case, because the goal here is to have this nice red archery target. That's purely an aesthetic thing, man. I've done it in dark blue, I've done it in light blue, I've done it with gray and black and so forth. Whatever you like. Now, as with all rooms, you query the item, you make it into a room, you size it up. The reason I'm making the rooms is big. Notice that the room actually stops uh, along the channels. That's intentional. Um, the goal here is to force the archer to stand in this bottom space and fire all the way down here, thereby creating more misses and splitting up the bolt stacks as much as possible. Additionally, he'll spend more time training, and every time he shoots at the target, we get more experience, which is what we want. Um, we're not going to... Notice the shooting direction here is important. Uh, you need to make sure that you are shooting in the rec correct direction. If, for example, I said top to bottom here, my archers would no longer use this archery target because they can't stand at the top and shoot down at the target. Uh, likewise, if I said right to left, there's no place for them to stand on the right side of the target. If I say left to right, there's no place to stand on the next to the target. Bottom to top is what we want here. We want them shooting from the bottom all the way up to the top of the archery range. Um, you then set them, you set whichever squad it is to be shooting as training, and you're off to the races. Uh, they'll come and use their arrows up as soon as they get them, pretty much. As soon as all of the archery targets are up, we will convert our existing hunter squad into an archery squad and get them training. We will get, uh, ooh, look, a forgotten beast. When did we get a Forgotten Beast? Huh, we must not have seen him yet. He's down in the cavern somewhere, no doubt, wandering around like a lunatic, not doing anything productive. Awesome.
each archery range is its own room. Set them up, let them go, don't worry about it after that. Make sure you set your shooting direction correctly. Make sure you assign every squad that needs to be able to use the room to use the room. Uh, that means to say you don't need to set your, your axe dwarf squads to train archery, but you probably want to set any archery squads you have to train in every archery range you have. Um, easiest way to do that, in my opinion, is simply to set all of the shooting directions and the sizes of the rooms, and then go back later as you add squads and set them to train in each archery range that you have. Um, that way you're not having to worry about, well, gee, did I create this squad set to train on that or not? Enraged at being ignored? Oh, it's not being ignored. We're just planning to deal with it properly with a trained military. The peasant that's missing is the one that died in the wildfire in the uh, second episode. He got trapped on the surface in the middle of a wildfire which caught up to him, surrounded him, and burned him alive. It destroys the corpses, so you we don't have a body to bury. We memorialized him with a slab. Notice that the dogs on chains are both female and they're producing puppies that are not automatically being assigned to our pasture, so we have to take care of that. My guess is if it's being ranged repeatedly like that, there's probably animal men down in the cavern somewhere, and they are uh, fighting the forgotten beast from time to time, causing it to become enraged and then lose its rage. All right, and our wood and or our leather and cloth area got cleaned up appropriately.
Okay, we've now set up a, a, a bar stockpile for our uh, forge area. That's where the uh, metal bars will be kept until our forges are ready to process them properly. So the smelters, are, we won't be hauling the bars from the smelters all the way back up to the temporary stockpile anymore. Got one dwarf who's down into the fine status again. Let's take a moment and see who he is. Sigan. Yeah. Okay, moving on. Upset about being relieved from duty means she was taken off duty while she doesn't have a citizenry skill. Probably need to get her some time uh, doing something other than military duty as long as we're going to rotate folks in and out. Here you can see sparring. Notice that the uh, dwarves are doing, going back and forth at each other, but everything's either parried, j blocked, or jumped away. Even if someone vastly outskilled the other one, the worst you would get is a lightly taps the target message. The uh, killing of your sparring partners has been removed in the current version, thankfully. Sir, we can't do that there. Okay, guys, we're coming up on 11 o'clock. That's usually the time I knock off. Are there any questions, things we were supposed to cover? We did Oh, the hospital. That's what we didn't get to. Let's do that now. Remember earlier I built some containers, um, basically some boxes. If we have any bags, those count as containers as well, but I typically use uh, coffers, rock boxes, basically, to hold things. Uh, we're going to set up one container in the hospital. Just one. What'll happen is, I believe we already, no, we haven't set the zone up, so we got to do that too. We'll set a hospital zone up as well. Now, there's a bug in the current version that basically says they're going to build that box, and when they do, people are going to come along and jam a bunch of hospital supplies in it, which is okay, except they'll jam one type of supply in there, and they'll keep jamming it in there until it uh, fills until it fills up the box or meets the requirements. And the problem is, is that it doesn't check the requirements as often as it should. And so you'll get 40 people all jamming thread in at once, 
And then after the 40th person jams the thread in there, it goes, oh, yeah, there's enough thread in there now. We can stop. And you really only need three people's worth of you know, thread-moving jobs to get, the, get it stocked. So you're going to see them move a little bit of thread, move a little bit of cloth, probably get some splints in here at some point. Okay, let's check on the hospital zone and see what it's status is. It's got enough thread, it's got almost enough cloth, needs some more splints. Notice our soap job is finished. There's the giraffe soap, which we will use in our hospital to keep our dwarves from being killed by infections if they're ever wounded. Uh, you don't need to make a lot of soap necessarily, but it doesn't hurt to make some. Um, 20 or 30 soap would probably be enough to keep you for a short time as long as you're not having dwarves constantly need to bathe, for example. And we need to get some mechanisms built so we can finish our wells and then we'll be in business. I'm finishing the wells, I'm finishing the wells, as soon as we get some mechanisms that we need, because I used all the mechanisms on cage traps. As soon as we get the mechanisms, I've got everything I need for the wells. See? Mechanisms. It's not my fault. Honest! Okay, I may have gotten a little carried away with cage traps, but that's okay. Now, see, notice they're still bringing thread to the hospital. Yeah, we don't need any more thread. We're completely full up on thread and then some, but the jobs are still being assigned, and there you go. The hospital limitations are effectively ignored in the current version. It's a bug. Meanwhile, they're still ladling on the thread. And the cloth. I, yeah, but the problem is if I forbid the coffer, I think they stop using anything in it, too, and then you end up with a situation where uh, they'll have all this stuff in the hospital, but they won't actually use any of it, I don't think, but maybe.
even with it forbidden, they're still moving cloth around. They just didn't put it in the coffer. And we need to get some brewing done because we're getting really low on booze. See, they're still trying to jam stuff into the coffer, even though it's forbidden. They bring it, they drop it, they leave it. This is the problem you run into. So, here's what we're going to do. We're going to get rid of it. Uh, we'll put a stockpile in place of it. We'll put a stockpile that holds soap. We'll put a stockpile that holds cloth. We'll put a stockpile that holds thread. We'll set it up to take from its individual stockpiles, and that'll put stockpiles close to the uh, hospital. The doctors are perfectly capable of using items out of those. Um, it's not as neat and pretty. We'll have stuff scattered everywhere, but that's okay. We can deal with that. You also can't remove a forbidden building. You know, just in case you were wondering. What the hell are my doctors doing? I pay them to build mechanisms, not sit around all day and, you know, haul stuff. Where are they at?
can't do it. Yes, I'll do it, but no, it won't work. And another mood. This one's a possession, so we won't end up with a legendary crafter. And he's going to do leatherworking or tanning. If you're playing vanilla and you're not using show mood, generally speaking, I'll keep an eye on my guy to make sure he starts the construction. Once he's started, we're good. If he stops out and stalls in the workshop, we know he needs more stuff. And he's underway, and there's our next mood. Chances are good it's not going to be a particularly useful item, but who knows, maybe we'll end up with the world's most useful thong. And the iron blocks I had built specifically for my wells have just been used up by this guy who's going to build a thong. Welcome to Dwarf Fortress. Oh, I won't do it. Planning? What's planning? We don't need no planning. I, I finished the artifact. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's a leather shield. I'll name you after Technically, I could give this to someone, but in reality, if I'm going to give you a shield, I'm going to give you a shield, not a buckler. And if I'm going to give you a shield or a buckler, it's going to be made out of something a little, you know, heavier than owl leather. Damn it.
And here's our second artifact. Cave spider silk, rings of iron, horned owl leather. Uh, let's see. A... Wow. And the whole point of this artifact is the guy getting appointed to the outpost liaison position. He's not even a member of our group. He's a member of the home group. Oi. A chastity belt. Yeah, that would have been about as useful. Sorry, sir, I can't do it. Looks like we need to adjust our vault so it, uh, oh no, they're bringing it back in the bin. I think that's going to take care of the problem here. Now here's where we really get to it. Let's turn off engraving for this dwarf and leave engraving on this guy and have him engrave our dining room. He's now a legendary engraver. So theoretically that's, you know, about as good as... Actually, let's scale him up just a little more. Let's see if we can't get him to legendary plus five first and then we'll have him do go completely nuts in the dining room. We'll cover everything in engraving. Probably of cheese. An image of a screaming cheese on fire would actually be preferable to the contents of most engravings. Sorry, sir, I can't do it. Ah, I can't do that there. That sounds like a palatable end to a fortress. Watch that legendary engraver go! 